All right, we are live, boys and girls. Another episode of Cameron Flask. I have no idea what number it is, but if I ask Ben, he will not tell me the correct one. 51, right, I think you'll find it is actually this week. 51. Unbelievable. We are going to have a very short pre Flask show today. I have uh, just arrived in Oakland, California, right across the bay from San Francisco. So I'm in the hotel room. Uh, luckily, the internet is good, better than at my place, actually. And we, of course, have our two partners in crime, my partners in crime, Mr. Ben Barden and Mr. Caleb Pike. He is getting ready. It's game time. He's got doing like the he's probably uh, limbering warm up. up this week. Yeah, he's yeah. really getting it all going on. I slept on my neck weird. Did you? <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> That's called getting older, Caleb. Yeah. That's what and it is. It's only going to get worse, my friend. It's okay. We're going to get there. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting, but it's the same for all of us. Why will I did last time too? Oh yeah. You did behave yourself 360 grad. You sort yes. of did. It was, it was maybe myself and Eric and Ben who did not behave ourselves. Um, I don't like the way you put the emphasis on my name then. I didn't, I did not. Come on, <laughs> Ben Barden. What's up, Sam? Evening. Uh, who else do we have here? We've got the Dan Palin, and we have Guillermo Montesinos, also known as Memo, a childhood friend of mine for many, many, many years. And we've got who else do we have coming in? Uh, yeah, good. All right, so we are close, and we'll do some more shout outs and uh, talk about some stuff as we keep going into this thing, Henrique. Henrik, uh, Mike, Kim, Andres, uh, Andre, Sky. Oh, here we go. Boom, here boom, we boom. go. Here we here go. We go. Everybody's showing up. Okay, good. Um, and we are almost at three o'clock. And then I turn it over right now to hmm. Mr. Ben Barden. So good evening. Welcome, one and all, to Camera and Flask, episode 54. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 54, <laughs> 27. <laughs> All right, doubling twin. All right, twenty-seven. So okay. every week we do this at midnight here in Central Europe, eleven p.m. in the UK, three p.m. on the West Coast, and six p.m. on the East Coast. Did I get that all right? Yeah, Bam. except for um, you said every week, and it is every week, except for there okay. are occasionally, very, mm. very occasionally, small exceptions. And next there week, are. both myself and Ben will not be in the building as it were and so we have all made a collective decision somebody remember at the end of the show to remind everybody mm. that we will be taking one week off that is next wednesday and we will all be back in yes. better form than before uh the following week okay that's what yeah we got. it doesn't okay. happen very often this is only like the third second time, time. i think it's actually the second time maybe yeah it's which is which is amazing i think yeah yeah, in, yeah. S in six months, we've done pretty well with that. So yeah, that's that's great. All right, so heading over, because Jem's desperate to tell us about his day. No, I'm not. No, no you, you, come on. Well, we're desperate to hear about your day. Tell us about the eventful journey you've had from home to where oh, you are now. Goodness gracious. So the, the traveling part of it was fine. Flight left on time, landed on time. Um, I'm doing a corporate job. So basically it's, uh, for an existing client, we did one of these last year, we go into a green screen stage and we shoot essentially a webinar or webcast. So they do technology company. So great. Um, they have a lot of moving parts and generally scripts and PowerPoint presentations and all of the elements that are going to be part of this, um, day of production are are basically going on until the absolute last second and even on set we're making changes but an early conversation when we started the project was just to re-verify that we're not going to have any teleprompters because we'll have a confidence monitor which basically pushes the powerpoint presentation and all of the notes to the person who's up on the stage or the people who are up on the stage they rehearse mm -hmm. what they're doing, and then they just look down at the confidence monitor just for reminders. It's just as a, a slight aid. So I, I drive to the airport, 
you know, crack of dawn. I get there, check in, all of that kind of stuff. I'm literally walking to the tarmac because it's one of those planes that you, you know, you go up the the stairs basically to get on the plane. You're not inside. And as I'm walking outside, I get a phone call from somebody on the client side and says, uh, we need three teleprompters, one on each camera because it's a three camera shoot and an operator as mm. I'm getting onto the airplane and we are setting up tomorrow morning. So, mm. uh, you can just imagine mm. what my day has been like and, uh, and how, uh, how many phone calls, emails, texts, and everything else. We have just secured a teleprompter operator and, uh, and all of that stuff. But it was a heck of a day. And, uh, yeah. and, and totally time now for this. This thing okay. right here is going to happen. I'm just saying right now. There you go. All right. All right, let's go. Let's find out how Caleb is first, and then yes. we'll come back to the bottles. So, mm. Caleb, you're you're coughing and spluttering. Yep. You spittering and spattering. <laughs> uh, you see me just making weird stuff. That's me just muting, do my thing. But uh, much better than Jim. I didn't have any of that exciting stuff. So, doing well. Okay. But yourself. Just... Mm, chaos. Okay, yeah. so I'm I'm good. I'm very hungover because we uh, had to burn the witches last night, which is a thing here that they do on the As last day of does. April. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> of the end of spring. As one does in the Czech Republic, burn the That's, witches. Now, what do you do with your witches? About that time. Well, mm, we, we just, just keep them we, we sweep up, sweep them under the rug, or we where do you put, put them, them Caleb? Box. Put them. Uh, <laughs> Caleb puts his witches in a box. Put them in a box, <laughs> like an old Nike it. sneaker box or something yep. like that. Yeah, just mm, put them uh, on the Fair enough. Fair enough. But well, here we burn them, and then there's drinking involved in that. So today's been a little rough, and I'm packing for a big shoot. I'm expecting a day like Gems tomorrow. I've got to get mm. lots of stuff to Norway mm. to put it on a boat that then I have to hang around for a couple of days and do some admin and then fly out to a rig on a helicopter on Saturday. But with the SAS pilot strike, everything's going sad. Yeah, so bonkers. I am, yeah. Crazy, but all sorted. It should all be fine. And if it's not, it's not. It's all all good. Okay. So come on, let's let's get to where I think we're all itching for a drink. Mm. So let's let's Except for you, start. clearly, Ben. <laughs> Hair of the dog, my friend. This might finally pull me around. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's start with Caleb. Are you having to medicinal? Uh no, I was gonna not, but then started to roll around that time and i was like mm, mm. so uh nothing special same thing we've had before i love it uh, i love he doesn't label. show i love he, he doesn't show the bottle there's no <laughs> bottle left it's in the garbage it's, <laughs> no, it's it's upstairs i just grabbed a little something something it empty i i need to figure out how to make this like i need to get some little little baby samplers or something yeah so i have a little something each time yeah so this is this could get ex expensive but you got to show the bottle for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You can't zoom in without the bottle. That's like I know. I know. With your All face right. and the little oh. cuddling. I like that. <laughs> rubber bands. Okay. Are it, I was about to say, he's got to go get some more rubber <laughs> right bands. Before we went live, my rubber bands all disintegrated on my microphone. So. And that literally is what happened. He didn't mean rubber bands mean something else. Okay, everybody. So get your mind out of the gutter. Okay. Mm. 360 grab. No. Yeah. I, exactly. I, I think it. And I think it's just hilarious that you're you're having this thing with the rubber bands the week that you posted this video yes. about your fifteen hundred dollar <laughs> audio setup. Yeah. It's genius. No, oh, Eric's here. We got Naso in the house. Yes, it's great sir. having him last week. Daniel rolling uh, in here. Oh my Our god, eighty five one eight. Yeah, I don't see Ron Jeremy in the in the chat. That's good. Thank oh. goodness. By the yeah. way, I I wanted to know. Um, I wanted to know, like, there's three people who come to the chat. I would want to know what they do with the witches. One is 360 grad, but don't answer, please. <laughs> I, I wanted, I want to know what. What, what are you doing? I, 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 why, yeah, why are you why, even starting are you with doing? it? And then Grumpy Penguin and uh, and then Shiz Nuts. What would Shiz Nuts do with the, with the witches? All right, we're done with this. Talk about okay. demonetized, more like channel deleted. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, Jen. Just like move on. What are you drinking? Okay, so meat pie. Uh, tell you, boy. Uh, I there's a Bevmo near me because uh, I'm in California, by the way. And this Ooh. is from uh, actually, it's this is not from Bevmo. I went in there and I was like, oh, there's a Trader Joe's, and I needed a salad. Joe's, Trader Joe's, 
And that's where I'm going to get all my craft services from later tonight for the shoot. It's fantastic for that. Uh, and I don't know what this is. It's a Japanese whiskey. It was not expensive. It was like $18, Ryo. And uh, I'm going to drink it. And that's all I have to say about that. And sorry about that AF. Uh, wow. Okay. I'm pouring it right, now. Nice. Well, I saw that. Interesting. I saw that because I bought the Trader Joe's uh, blend that you had had. The eight year or whatever it, it is. It was good. Oh, it the eight nice. year. It yeah, really nice. nice. Very nice. Uh, 18 bucks. Uh, yeah, some nice stuff there. So there it is. It's a, it's a little dark. It's kind of got a nice oh, it color good. to it. It does yeah. have a nice color Let's to it. Yeah, let's see what little, happens. Little, Japanese. It won't be peaty. Right. All right, what you got, brother? I'm drinking what I was drinking well, a week before last, which is the – but I've in the bottle rather than in the decanter this time. So you can mm. see if you're in Europe and you've got a little near you, go buy this. Uh, it's amazing. Great. It's uh, an eight-year-old – no, a five-year-old. Sorry, a five-year-old wow. blend. It costs mm, seven, eight dollars. I'm so jealous. There's a lot of alcohol on this in the nose. How am I going to get it home, Eric? I'm not going to get it home. I'm just going to drink it. No, I you have met him I... before, haven't you? You, <laughs> you know who you're talking to. <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, okay, we're gonna. Uh, so you are the captain of our ship today, Ben. So I'll be quiet and let you take us into our. Oh, no. Well, we yeah, exactly. That's. Cheers. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers to everybody out there. Tell us what you're drinking, by the way. We'd like to know. Mm. Mm. I feel that may, that may pull a hangover around. How, how's the Japanese one, though? I'm interested. It's interesting. It doesn't have that. It's not like the one we had in Vegas at the, uh, at the Atomos party. It's mm. uh, pretty smooth. No. It needs a drop or two of water, which I'll handle in a second. And... Okay. Uh, for eighteen dollars, it's very drinkable, and um, I'm gonna now try the. I'll try the ten year at Traders next time and see how that is because I tried the eight last time, so it's all good. All right, there we go. Excellent. A little bit of water. There we go. We're in. All right, so we're gonna go on to this week's topic, which is glass. We're gonna talk lenses and choosing the right lens for the job. Did you like my poem, by the way, for the description of this week's? That was episode? amazing. I showed it to my. Can wife you read it out loud, by the way? Can you please read it? Because we would like to okay. hear it. Yeah. All right, let me, let me dig it out. So, um, <clears throat> so this week, the fast talk, choosing glass with Zoom, from Zooms with flexibility when you need that fast agility to prime so fine that make your talent shine when you've got that extra time. That, that's it. It's you probably know, the best know. description we've ever had. And I'm the not the being best. facetious, by the way. The best. the best. The best I, one. I, I wasn't sure whether, you, whether it would make the cut. I thought when I sent it to you, you might. You might this not this week, it. this week, you could have written anything, and I would have copy and pasted it in with the shit that's going on in my life. So you're great. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right, good. Okay. So, so unbelievable. So on that, well, I'm a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Is seeing mm. as we've got we've got jobs coming up, you and me at the moment. Let's talk about what we're doing for those. That's yeah. a good place to start to dive into that. Million so, percent. All right. So, what are you what are you using on this job? Uh, that's a great question. So, this job is a green screen shoot. So, we're not thinking necessarily that we have to have the fastest lenses. So, we're going to need some deep depth of field. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to be. Um, I'm going to say. Uh, I think the last time we did this job, we shot it in f eight. So, we'll probably be at around an eight. We might be a five six eight split, which means somewhere in between. We might be between an eight eleven split. It all depends on what has to stay in focus um, in the frame when we're doing mm. it and how much movement there is with the shoot. So we decided that we are doing um, on a camera, it's three C300 Mark IIs. So mm -hmm. a camera will have the Cine Servo 18 to 80. And then we will have the Cine Servos, which will be the 70 to 200s on the B and C cameras which will basically be for our singles and stuff. So those are the three lenses we're going to use. Now we have a couple of extra lenses there that are in the bag, some L glass, but those Cine servos are going to be our ones. They're a T4.4, so they're basically F4-based lenses, mm -hmm. and uh, they render pretty warm. They'll be nice, and when we shoot this job, we shoot, uh, we shoot for, like, no nothing in post. So we basically dial in 
uh, exposure. We dial in color temperature. It's a Rec 709. Um, we're going to shoot 10 bit, 410 megabits per second. Uh, so it'll be 10 bit 422, but it'll basically be baked in the oven and we'll hand it off for posts and the keys will be pulled from that. Um, that's what we're using on this job. That's what I got for you. How about you? Okay. So me for the, for this one that I've got, uh, weight is very much an issue. Mm -hmm. Um, and the logistics of this job are very complicated as I was mentioning earlier. So for me, it's, and those kind of jobs, it's, Canon L zooms really 1635, 2470, 70 to 200, which kind of covers everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, it covers pretty much all bases for that. Um, weather sealing, big deal for this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be uh, 200 plus miles out into the sea, into the North Sea. And although we're getting into that better time of year to be doing those jobs, I'm going to have daylight this time, which is going to be a nice little uh, plus. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's got to put up with it's got to put up with that. So using them as kind of variable primes, that's my go-to for those kind of jobs. I'm taking the Sigma thirty-five uh, one four R uh, as well because I quite like that for shooting interviews with. And it, for some some interviews I'm shooting, and it's literally finding someone on the doing their job, and that's just with the zooms and but things that I can set up, like with the rig managers that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll probably use that so that that's what i'm using for for this and for a lot of jobs um like that that i'm traveling with can i ask you a question about your 70 to 200 and by the way yes. kim uh thumbs up on getting your xt3 yeah. um so did you your 70 to 200 are you because mm. you said weight is an issue are you yes. rocking the 28 or the four the two eight. Okay. See, I I'm I'm a big f four is person, and what I love about that lens is it's par focal. I know I'm not as mm. fast on that lens, but because it's a seventy to two hundred, I'm still yeah. getting my shallow depth of field, and it's incredibly lightweight. Um, it is ridiculously light. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and the is is great on it, and I I just love the way that lens looks, and uh, and it's par mm. focal. So you can zoom in, you know, you can get tack sharp focus and then zoom in and out all day long as long as your subject matter isn't really moving from where they are. Yes. Uh, hmm. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, an interest, it's an interesting point. My uh, 7200 is getting quite long in the tooth and is probably going to be replaced in the next six months. Well, there's a new version of it now. So There is. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, mine, mine's good. the original, but it's good. Yeah, I've, I've heard yeah, yeah. the new version is actually a big. It's not. It's not like the twenty-four to one hundred and five. I think the twenty-four to one hundred and five, arguably, if you really read about it online, is an incremental upgrade. It's a. It's an evolution, not a revolution. But I've heard that the seventy to two hundred uh, version two two eight is uh is you know is considerably better. So not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Excellent. Um, yeah. What about? Uh, can you let's uh, maybe ask Caleb about his sort of like day in day. Well, out. what I was I, that I was going to ask you for when you're when you're doing your episodes and you're producing your content, is there a set of lenses that you always go to, or does that depend on you, know, you putting those in as you're reviewing stuff? Does that change a lot? Yeah, it's, um, there's there's a couple that are always in use. Oddly enough, actually, I have right here. Um, the, for, I use a lot of Panasonic stuff just because it, it, it just always works. Mm. Um, oh, that's a need, great lens. Yeah. I don't need autofocus unless, uh, I'm doing this. I love Sony for that, but I just can't get past the eight bit situation and the S log stuff. Yeah. So V log for everything with a lot. And then I can do, you know, lower bit rate, but 10 bit 422. And that just is amazing to work with. Mm. Um, but yeah, this 12 to 60, this is actually the Panasonic kit lens. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it is what I use for the tabletop stuff. Got it. 12 to 60 is a phenomenal range. Um, so really, really solid dual IS uh, with that. And then I use the uh, Sigma 18 to 35 for my main mm -hmm. shot with a speed booster and the GH five S that's kind of my main camera mm. setup. And it's just what you can do with that combo uh, image wise is, is amazing. 
Um, excuse me one second. <laughs> this comes and goes, this new thing. It's amazing. I'll be like crystal clear. I'm like, I'm cured. And then it hits me like a free train. <laughs> um, otherwise, I just, I try to, I love vintage stuff. And I, mm. I love the idea. And I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Um, I love the idea of doing every video with one set of lenses. So like Canon FDs, um, yeah. Nikon lenses, you know, yeah, yes. with a set. I just love that idea. But practically, I feel mm. like I always reach for the same random lenses, you know, <laughs> like like you're talking about a couple of zooms, uh, both you a couple of zooms from Canon mm. and then like a prime from Sigma or a prime mm. from Zeiss. And it seems mm. like a lot of people, that's kind of what they go for. Mm -hmm. Um, I know back when I did corporate work and I, I grabbed two of them, or actually all three of them, uh, I had a set, the, this set of uh, Nikon lenses. So uh, all zoom AFDs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 17 to 35, um, 80 to 200, and then the Beast, ugh, which feels wow. very dated and large, yeah. but the uh, 28 80. to 80. Okay. Or is it 24? No, 28 to 80, yeah. Um, Duke, I remember reading an article about by Duclos uh, talking about the that set and how it's, it's a great one to mod, or it's great for video. Hard stops, really built well, good optics. And they'll mm -hmm. literally, I think this is the most uh, versatile mount right now. Mm. You can pretty much do Nikon on everything, including right. the new Nikon Z6. So mm. that was my go-to. They all look great together. They're all F2.8. They're kind of big, mm. but um, I love them. And I, in fact, this setup right here with the Fuji X-T3, and that uh, like one hundred and sixty dollar speed booster yeah. from uh, what's the name? Oh, that's a speed booster. So you're getting yeah. that extra stop, and you're getting the the full frame field of view, basically, right? Yeah, I'm trying to remember the brand. Um, mm -hmm. Not Comlight. No, it's got a weird name on it, but it's a different brand. But it's an EOS two or EOS two FX. Mm. And this setup right here, I I just love, and I have the. I was using it on a shoulder rig uh, recently with a the little nano nucleus nucleus nano. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about that. Oh, Do you like it? I just that got setup it. It's unbelievable. I just got it. Should I? Am I gonna like you should it? Use it like that's all the, the one time. for like that's the one for like two hundred and twenty bucks, right? <clears throat> yeah. That I have in my box. I haven't opened up the box yet. Let me so ask you. That. Oh, good. Yeah. Go ahead. It, it, on this so, on a lens this big, like and and it the front sticks in and out. Yeah. But. Uh, the filter threads don't move and all that. Oh, there's on a lens this, on yeah. a lens this monstrous. Yeah. Um, it was struggling a little bit. Uh, to to the motor is a little weak, but you can use anything from Tilta. All their follow focus stuff uh, is interchangeable. So you could okay. buy the beefy motor and use it with that system. So what and comes in saw... that kit? Sorry. What comes in that kit oh, with it? Sorry. Um, actually, I have it right here. Hmm. writing a blog post so you get the controller this is part of a shoulder rig little controller yeah. uh with a quick release they definitely could have designed that better it's not really universal so it's kind of a pain in the butt to work with um and then you get a motor and then you also um get the motors right here it's tiny sorry i gotta switch over to you see that little thing yeah it's really mm -hmm. small it's really small um it comes with a couple cables. I don't really like that they're the battery's like a, a weird battery. It's not USB rechargeable or something more universal. Uh, okay. um, and it comes with like a, a way to rig it up if you don't have 15 millimeter rod stuff. So you can have a really, really minimal little setup with that. Do you have the 12 to 35? The 12 to 35 for uh, for micro four thirds? Uh, that's the lens yes. that you first showed. The two eight, and then uh, somebody, Chris or Michael, somebody mentioned it, and I think it's a yep. That's great, the one. That's a great lens. And didn't right. Olympus? It's Olympus who made the same lens. Somebody made the same focal length that was really great. The twelve to thirty five. Twelve to thirty five. Yeah. For oh oh for yeah, micro Olympus has like a twelve to forty. Yeah. If if, if I, this is oh, early days mm -hmm. when the GH four mm -hmm. came out. I know it was a great lens, though. It was a two eight, and it just—it um, was kind of a beast. It was similar in size to, to that 
that lens from oh, uh, Nikon. The, uh, it was like a crazy range. Yeah, but I don't think it's a twenty-four to forty. But it was it was straight through that twelve to sixty. There's though, a forty what? to one fifty f two. Yeah, this and everybody had that. It was that one? But what's the one you the twelve to sixty? Is that an f? This is the Panasonic. It's a kit lens for some of their cameras. But is it is it a fixed aperture or is it no, a variable? Three five to five six okay. for tabletop. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But they do have the. You know, I have the the tw uh, twelve to thirty five and the thirty five to one hundred. Those are both good. If I'm starting mm. today, and you're mm. doing video, I would just get Olympus lenses. You don't gain yeah. the stabilization magic, but you you have like a clutch system for focus. Yeah, yeah no, I don't know which one it is. Mind. Maybe it is, but I, I maybe it is a twelve to forty. I'm seeing a lot of people. There's a lot of people making comments in the chat too. So okay, we should, nice. Like yeah, one of the one of the things that I think we should talk about, and I think we all have viewpoints on this, mm -hmm. is the twenty four to one hundred five has been mentioned more than once yes. here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. Um, I'm going to give you my take on it. Um, it's the workhorse Canon lens that is meh, and that's spelled M E H. It is it's, exactly that. It's it's like it's there. It's not really an f four constant aperture because when you get to the long end of the lens, it does drop. Let's be honest. Mm. Let's not try to sugarcoat it, everybody. You lose light at the end of that twenty four to one hundred five. But it's a uh, great is. It looks pretty good, and it really you know. It's been it, on, on the, yeah. But it, I, the, the, oh, the go thing, ahead. go on, sorry. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. The, the thing with that lens is that I think it's, it's a very useful focal length on full frame, but it's not that great on a, a crop sensor on Super 35. I'd say you, you're absolutely right about that. And, and, sure. and, the, and the 1755, which I didn't mention earlier, which I'm certainly taking with me with the, which, if the weather's bad, not because it's not weather sealed and mm. dust gets in it and all sorts. But that 1755-28, which I've got on uh, the RSR that's shooting me right now, that's that's a, a much better fit. Oh. And I would say a, a much sharper lens a, a generally. And, and you pick that up for nothing. I'm, I'm shocked that they never made the 17-55 to as an L lens because well, that if, focal length range, well, I know it's an EFS lens. Exactly, but, and but they I, don't do but, any L in that. Right, but I wish that they would make a, a essentially a seventeen to fifty five in a full frame that is as sharp as that lens. I mean, mm. I, I obviously, if I had my choice, I'd say just make a, a sixteen to eighty or a seventeen to eighty. That would be even more usable. But um, that is a pretty phenomenal lens. Yeah, mm. yeah. it is. Yeah. It, it is a run and gun lens. That's great. The IS is good mm. on it. What about you, Caleb, for 24 to 105? Because you've shot a lot of 24 to 105 in your day too, right? Uh, well, I, I used to, and I had the one of the Canon L, the like the OG one. Mm -hmm. Um, but I found like this, and I was this is my question for you guys too. And mm -hmm. anyone in the chat, please let let us know also. Yeah. Um, when have you like have you just kept that lens with you because it's such a giant range? Yes. Or or when do you decide, you know what, forget that. I'm gonna like often for me, I would grab one of these of my three, I would grab like two. So like depending on the job, I'd do the 17 to 35 and then the 28 to 70. Because yeah, I figured same. I wasn't gonna get stupid with the long lens or vice versa. Can I raise how my often hands? do you do that? Well, yes. let me raise my hand because I the one thing I want to say is that what really changed it for me was the version two of the 24 to 70 from Canon. Mm. It's not IS, but that is a bonkers lens. And again, it goes mm. back to what Ben was saying, which is full frame, right? So it's not as usable on a crop sensor camera. But that 24 right. to 70 version two L lens from Canon, if you are a Canon shooter especially, is just ridiculous. I mean, I can't tell you how much stuff we've shot in terms of educational content as that being our A camera lens because it's so sharp, but in a good way. And AF is great when you're taking advantage mm. of dual pixel AF. And uh, and it's just, uh, and it's a 2.8, you know? So if you're, if you're stabilized, um, that's like for a full frame camera on Canon, that's kind of like the Neo. And then you decide, do I want to get the 70 to 200 F4 IS version two, or do I get mm. the 70 to 200 F2.8 version two? But if you have those two lenses on a full frame camera, 
Um, and this goes back to what Caleb was talking about. You know, in an ideal world, you are you are using a set of lenses because every manufacturer has their own little secret sauce in terms of contrast, micro contrast, uh, you know, saturation, um, mm -hmm. you know, all of the things that they use. Some lenses are warmer, some lenses are cooler, some lenses are more neutral overall. And when you are mixing and matching, when you're doing a project, then you could have some issues with that. You throw a Zeiss lens on and then you yeah. put on a, a Cine Servo lens from Canon. Cine Servo is going to be so much warmer than the Zeiss lens. So you're going to have to, no matter if you're white balance and, and you're, uh, you know, everything is the same, when you're swapping those lenses, you are going to get a different image from those different lenses for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of, I mean, I think in terms of the stuff that we buy for sure, or for, for me that you're, that you're putting money into and mm. those lenses that are earning you money all the time, those zooms mm. for me are definitely that. And I know Jem, I think it's probably the same for you to a degree mm -hmm. that those lenses are the, are the ones that, that make sense to have money tied into. But in terms of, I suppose, kind of like the, the sort of the fancy stuff, the things that actually excites you when you stick them on and really you want to shoot with. I, I had a, a demo day and borrowed a load of uh, the Zeiss Milvis stuff recently, and I would I would so love those, but it just doesn't make right now. It doesn't make financial sense for me because they're heavy, yeah. And I would need to take probably a set of four or five of them around with me. Yep. I still might, and yep. and and the other. Thing that's changing at the moment of course is is the af is getting great on mm -hmm. all our cameras now mm -hmm. and that they don't do it and it, they're a lot of money yeah i mean if you're e-mount then the bodice lenses are fantastic from yes Rice, and i love them and we just shot in uh red rock canyon and i did the a whole series for zeiss that is starting to come out which is on the zeiss bodice lenses but um I think that the one thing that Zeiss has done really well and pretty much every manufacturer is following suit is that they are focusing on full frame in terms of the lenses that they're making. And I think it's hard right now, and Caleb, you can weigh in on this, um, regardless of sensor size, if you're making an investment into lenses, it probably makes sense to go full frame overall. Mm. Because um, unless you're sitting in an ecosystem for, you know, for a certain type of work that you're doing where it might make sense not to do that and buy native glass that matches your sensor size. I mean, how do you feel about that? Um, that if you were starting today, Caleb, and you were saying, okay, I'm going to go into a GH5S, um, what decisions would you make in terms of the lenses you would buy knowing what you know, but not necessarily owning the lenses that you own? Um well, it's tricky because the in in this, if you're not going to buy a C200 and whatever is comparable every mm -hmm. five years, mm -hmm. four to mm -hmm. five years, it's it's crazy because I feel like we're changing cameras like underwear. They're all getting cheaper and better. Like like they're just like you know. So I wait a second. That's system. how often you change your underwear. <laughs> Every five years, <laughs> yeah. and, and no, your underwear is no. getting cheaper and better. How's it? How's your underwear getting better? No, no, it's getting better and better. <laughs> oh, it's getting uh, better. The new underwear is getting better, so yes, I want to okay. change it more often. I.e., two years. You know, <laughs> yeah, okay. um, there's just so much right now. Before, I felt like it was what it was Canon EF, or adopt this crappy E mount with the terrible lenses. Yeah. Or PL. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or no mount at all. Yeah um so now it's just it's too it, i still think ef and nikon but prefer i prefer the ef mount is mm. uh is the king it is I adapt, <clears throat> excuse me i've adapted everything to ef all my vintage stuff i get it to ef and then i can go anywhere and on my panasonic stuff i'll then use a speed booster that has an ef mount yep so i don't know <clears throat> if i was starting over it's tough and there's a lot of really good crop sensor stuff that's just amazing. Like Sigma's mm. Trinity set, you know those three lenses? No. Uh, I want to get them really bad, but it's just not in the books right now. But right now they, they've completed the perfect APS-C set, which is a 60 millimeter 1.4, 30 yeah. millimeter 1.4, mm. 56 millimeter 1.4. Wow. 
Uh-huh. And they're Wait, did all. You thir- did you say thirty? <clears throat> yes. Wow. I don't 16, know. 16, 30, and 56. They're adorable. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Small one four lenses. Yeah. And they if you look up either any of them, uh review wise, they're all like out of this park. What's like, the what Jake lens mounts did they offer them in? Sony E. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um what are the other crop? Uh no no FX, which would kills me. I would love that in an FX mount. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but they they've Sigma, I was talking to Gem. Sigma said, um, you know what? Fuji just hasn't released any information. It's a closed ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, we can't really you know, develop I think, past lenses. I was thinking about that today, Caleb, and I had a conversation with Zeiss about the same exact thing, which is why when you said mm-hmm. it to me, I was it was triggering something. Yeah. Um, because uh, of the same exact reason. They're not sharing information. So you know, if you have to right. go into the laboratory and guess, that becomes a much bigger R and D investment yep. than having, you know, having everything handed to you so that you can build the best lens you can for that camera system without that stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, it's micro four thirds and Sony E. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Um art series. Or no yeah. C series? Contemporary, that's right. C series. Mm. So like that would be really hot. Uh, if, if Sony comes out with like an A7S level crop sensor, which I yeah. don't see why they wouldn't, they're yeah. coming out with some yeah. kind of pro level, uh, 4K 60, 422 10 bit with those lenses, that's pretty interesting. Mm. Um, and then- so anyway, that's that's the crop thing, and then like you guys were saying with full frame, um, I man, I recently and I have it also here on the desk, um have been kind of going back to like cheap old school good stuff like uh, <laughs> the Rokinos. Samyang. Yeah. Um especially their Cine DS which is the exact same optics as their big boy uh what you call it? Um what's their like their metal Cine lenses? Oh, uh, Zines? Zines, that's right. Yeah. That's right, Zines. So it's, it's the same thing but plastic. Like this but that, I mean of these for what two grand you can pick up of like the full set yeah you can there there's massive variation in them though you get a good one they're great yeah good oh, okay you know, you, yeah you, you yeah you you gotta you gotta check the, if, if you buy them and they are good but you've gotta you've gotta do tests on them mm. and they'll they'll swap them out instantly for you interesting but I know that I know several people that have had them that have had bad copies, like back had focus problems, mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. Iris is bringing up yeah. uh, Voigtline, Voigtlander primes, and uh, which, yes. which, 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 by the way, are made in the same factory, or at least in the same factory as some, jeez, uh, some uh, Zeiss primes in Japan. Really? Oh yeah, mm. and uh, and so I own in EF mount. A twenty, a twenty-eight, and a forty. The forty is my absolute favorite. It's mm-hmm. buttery smooth in terms of focus, and that is, uh, you know, it's not the most like I probably overall prefer the look of the Olympus Zuko and the um, and the Fuji film le- lenses more in terms of the way that image is reproduced. But I absolutely love using that small 40 millimeter Voigtlander. And 40 millimeter is probably on a full frame camera my absolute favorite focal length. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm gonna, that for me, I would take over 35 or 50 um, any day. I really like 55, 56 as well. I'm partial to that a little bit more than I am to a 50 millimeter lens. Um, and, and maybe that's what we should talk about a little bit is like some of our favorite focal lengths. Mm, okay. Know? Yeah. All right. Yes. That's, that's a good place. So you're saying 40, 40 is my favorite on a full frame, which oh, means frame. that that's on a, a Sigma. On, so, Have you yeah. seen that thing? Oh my Sigma God. Email. Yeah. I'm not talking about size. <laughs> Break your but, wrist off. <laughs> yeah. The, but, but funnily enough, then when I'm on a crop sensor camera, the first lens that I got besides the kit lens for the Fujifilm XE2 was mm. the 27 millimeter pancake, which is essentially in terms of field of view, not depth of field, yeah. is uh, essentially a 40 millimeter. So I, I love that focal length in terms of, I think it more closely approximates maybe how I think I see the world in the normal right. focal length than a 35 or, or, or 50 millimeter. 
So I, I think the th for the for the same reason, but obviously we have a different conclusion that thirty five is mine on full frame mm. for sure, mm -hmm. because it's just that that you still get like an intimacy with things. You can still and you still get a really nice separation with it if you get a fast thirty five. Yeah, but you have context still within it. It's it's just that perfect. Anything wider than that, everything's just a little bit too there. Yeah. 50, I just find neither here nor there. I, I, I've i never liked 50 mil. Yeah, I, think I know you, everyone I else. You can get converted to 40 then because what you're saying just means you want to settle on the 40. When you're an old man, you'll be on a 40. I'll tell you. <laughs> the, older, the older you get. No. No. I know. I know. <laughs> and also, I think probably my favorite stills photographer, um, Joseph Karelka, his – so much of his stuff is shot 35 and mm. he's just the master of framing at that focal length so if you want to go look at just the best composition go and look at joseph cardelka's work it's absolutely incredible amazing you're smirking gem what are you, what are you? I'm, just, I'm just reading comments and what? dan i'm starting to learn that dan daniel moore photography dan is a cheeky bastard, you know, but that's okay. I like that. <laughs> uh, I'm still, I'm still trying to wipe that because he was on it. Yeah, his underwear stuff. Was... Oh, for goodness' sake! And Shiz Nuts is here, but the Grumpy Penguin has not been around for a while. I'm very upset about that. No, it's no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, Kim, Kim, Kim likes the 30 f 1.4. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 30 is good I, too. I don't think I've ever shot with a 30 millimeter lens. Remember that the the first Ooh. Sigma 30. In the DSLR days, but I never shot with that. But really, um, like seven D level stuff way back. Mm -hmm. With Everyone, the overheating, it, it, it was almost like having an in in lens Trump skin filter, though. <laughs> so orangey yellow, <laughs> but it was oh cool. God. Thirty millimeter, Keep amazing. Talking. Sorry, um, <laughs> uh, that yeah. So so favorite focal lengths. Yeah, um, I, I like what Desmond is saying. I, I it's tricky, right? So focal lengths, they're different. They react differently on different cameras. Yeah, but I still feel like I, I have a couple favorites that regardless just feel good. Um, 24 mm -hmm. and 28. Um, Desmond was talking about 24 and super 35. I, yeah, I like a, I like me a good 28. I feel 28 is really nice. Um, hmm. It just feels right, you know. If if, if as long as long as it's low distortion, like Sony has their twenty eight f two, which I love, but it's it's too distortion, too much distortion yeah. on the edges. But if you have a good twenty eight, which is why this twenty eight to seventy from Nikon is still one of my favorites, is a monster of a lens. But mm. um, on any focal length, I just it just feels right. Yeah, um, Can I, I also agree. Or... Like, oh, good. yeah. Oh, my first 40 was the 428 pancake from Canon. And I remember the first time I used it, it was like something about this just feels good. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to try a faster 40. I've never mm. done anything other. Yeah, than I'm really interested in that lens still, that, that 40 pancake. Mm, that Canon? It's, yeah. Which one? I Canon? The Canon? I have yeah, it. Yeah, the little pancake. It's amazing. I have, yeah. I have both of them. There, I have the 40 and the, uh, is it the 24? I have. Uh, but the 24 is not full frame, is it? Or is it? Uh, no, I don't think it is. But I have the 40. Wow. And the, the 40 on a, on a full frame camera. It's just great little. I mean, it's, 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 so fun. Mm. it's so tiny. I mean, you can actually put that that lens on a on a 5D Mark III, Mark, Mark IV, and, and it's still tiny. I mean, it just doesn't, you know, it's like you're basically just dealing with the camera body. And quite honestly, yeah. until you put a big lens on it, a DSLR is not actually that big. No, um, you know, not. so it's really pancake. That's why I love the 40 millimeter um, Voigtlander, but there's no AF on it, but right. it's buttery smooth. So if you're looking, oh my God, you know, I, I got, you know what? Say, I have a solution AF to that. I really do. For the X-T3. will change I, your I, life. Yeah, please, because I put this new firmware on, and I don't know what's up with the face. <laughs> it just had like a lazy. direct breakdown. <laughs> Watch. Let me see if I can do it. Wait, I gotta get it. There it is. There Let's it play. is. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh! So, what do I do? Here you go. Ready? Fix Anyone me. who has an XT3, this will break your head. Fix if me. you're not hitting when you hit record, the camera's better at autofocus. So what? it's crazy. Try it. Point the camera what? at stuff, Jim, at some point, and then hit record. It'll immediately get better. 
What? It's like it's like, oh, I'm not recording, whatever. Oh shoot, we're recording and it gets super serious. So try this. There's a setting in there yeah. where you you uh release without SD card. Okay. Turn that on yeah. sometime. Yeah. yeah. Hit record with yeah. no SD card in there mm. and do a live stream and see if it. But why is the face detection? Since version three firmware, it also seems to be bonkers. But that twitchy crap. Yeah, twitchy. Yeah. That doesn't happen. It's loud and twitchy. Seriously, like just point it back and forth at something sometime and then hit record. It'll get quiet and it'll mm. get better. Wow, it's really weird. It's super you, annoying. Can I tell you the other thing that happened to me was when I first got the X-T3 and I was doing tests, I was using the Sony wireless system and I was getting the chirping noise, uh, Ben, that we're so lovingly ah. used to on the uh, the FS700. And, the issue that yeah. brought us together. It did. Uh, <laughs> and and we found out that the chirping was not because of the camera or the wireless system. It was actually because we were using a certain brand of SD card. And when we switched out the SD card, the chirping went away. How crazy really? is that? Yeah, that is That's insane. Bizarre, and right? I did I did all the tests with, uh, with the guy from Fuji, with Mike. And we were like, we were at a trade show and I was going back and forth between the bathroom. And then at one point it felt a little weird, but Mike and I were in the bathroom doing recordings uh onto there because it was the quietest place in this whole uh building and then we figured out that it was actually the sony sd card and when we swapped it out for a different brand sd card the problem went away insane in the membrane I, can we there's so many uh, people who are giving so uh, many uh i need somebody to take over our okay uh, i gotta stop for here. a second yeah and 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 talk to travis because he's absolutely right Let's the tamron 28 to 75 which i should have mentioned is absolutely the bomb 28 to 75 frame really I'm using it right now mm -hmm. it's it's the best right now it you're using on it? it it lives on that camera yeah seriously yeah at 2.8 uh we're at 28 millimeters right now or maybe a little wider than 20 can we can you go a little closer though and show us one of those close-up caleb oh there it is that's the <laughs> magic are you at 75 right now uh 75 millimeter yep it's probably oh, focused on my nose wow yeah, my oh, eyes are out of focus oh it's my beautiful. god beautiful you're amazing. You go. Get those pores uh, in there. We needed. We we should have that once every episode. There's that is amazing. It's we should have a killer we should, lens. We should open on that. And it's small, every by week. the way. It's every really week. small of a lens. Is it? It's not much longer, and it's thinner than this twenty-four millimeter of one four. Wow. It's oh. really small, lightweight. It like put it on the camera and don't even bother taking it off. It's dynamite well, let's read thing. look at what chris is saying here and 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 when he says love he also means hate i love quirky gear stuff i found my ninja 5 audio input buzzed whenever i used full-sized samsung 800 and uh, 860 one terabyte drives with it yeah there's some weird stuff in zeros and ones land i don't understand it and that is weird because i'm pretty sure that's one of the approved drives for it anyway isn't it one of the um on on their list mm -hmm. i'm sure that's on there so that's super strange yeah M michael is in really an all caps mood today for sure mm. yeah for mm. sure and just going back to small lightweight zooms we haven't mentioned the the, the fujions that pair mm. Mm. oh yeah so and and those if you're on so what do they make that in now they do that in well, you're talking about the, well, we got the 18 to 55 is the, you talking about that? No, yeah, no, exactly. no, no, no. No, the oh, 18 to, 18 oh, to 55, the, 55 to 135. The, the yeah. magic lenses. No, those are magic, magic. lenses. E-mount yeah. and, uh, and, and X-mount. Uh, ridiculous. Yeah. The MKs and the, uh, the MKs. Yeah. dude, let me just tell you those, those two lenses. I wish they made for every freaking camera system in the world. Same. Mm. I wish they did that for Canon. There's a perfect, like everybody, you know, everybody goes gaga over the Vedra lenses, which they should to a degree. But those lenses, those lenses are like the Neo because they're basically like a set of Vedra primes in a zoom lens. And you've got two of those and you can shoot all day long. And they weigh nothing. They, they weigh are, absolutely nothing. They're sharp. I think that, you know, that maybe they're a little clinical in terms of look and feel to a degree. You know, it's not that je ne sais quoi, you know, that you get out of a 56 Fuji lens or some of these other lenses that we love, but they are the workhorses. If you don't need AF, then just forget about it. Uh, you've, have you shot with them, right, Caleb? Yeah. 
Well, They're just ridiculous. the fact that you can like, like an FS5 and one of those just feels mm. so good to it's work ridiculous. with. I don't think you'll care what it looks Except like. Except for the FS5 for part of it, but I didn't think well, that loud. Sorry, yeah, but you know what I mean. Loud. Like light when it comes to like a lightweight mini dock set, it's mm. like ridiculous. Kit, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, those two, um, and and when you see pictures of those lenses, if you've not actually picked them up and handled them, mm. if you see them on, they just look like big old nope. broadcast lenses. They look huge, but when you when you see them in person, they're tiny. They're featherweight. They division. weigh absolutely nothing. They're amazing. They're amazing. They are amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. uh those those are the I I would put those up there as you know some of the best zooms that have come to market in the last ten years for sure. No yeah. question. Yeah. I agreed. And also now apparently also for micro four thirds. I thought I'd mm -hmm. heard something that they just yeah, yeah, yeah. Email. I heard there's a way you can adapt yeah. them, isn't that right? No, there you can buy them. Or you no, buy them for the yeah, thing. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. So that kind of please make them for yeah. yeah, but but why hasn't why hasn't Fuji made uh, you know a digital cinema camera to to match with those lenses? Do you think I talked to will? them about that. What? Tell us what? I talked to them about that at NAB. Pray tell. And the guy, the huge sigh, and mm. then he's like, "Yep, we're hearing that a lot." So uh -huh. maybe all of you guys went over there and bugged them too. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, clearly they're thinking. They gotta be thinking long term with cinema, like those big, they, <laughs> those ridiculous, the uh, uh, medium format version of those lenses are out, or they announced them. Yeah. Did you see those guys, by the way? Not the Did lenses. I saw booth? the new. No. I saw the under plexiglass. It's like the something. size of my face. <laughs> they were in a glass box, and <laughs> it's just laughable. So you're saying gigantic, huge, like like. You know, yeah, you can put it on a medium format, but you're gonna need to buy like the biggest O'Connor head to like mount this whole thing. Just wow. absurd. Have absurd. you ever used the fifty to one hundred f one point eight, Caleb? Somebody's asking about the Sigma fifty to one hundred. Uh, no. Mm. But that Chinese company that Ben and I stopped by, I wanted. Yes. Yes. I almost bought that eighteen to thirty five. It just came the out, and I haven't told anyone because I don't want anyone to buy them all. <laughs> That they that were they were red. really interesting. That company, I and I still I still mm. can't figure out th how they do the rehousing. So mm. we have mentioned this on the um, post NAB show or on the NAB show actually. Yeah. But the the housing, so you can buy the lens from them that's rehoused as you would do from other people. But they also do it that you can take your own lens and you buy the housing and you can rehouse it yourself. Interesting. And and no matter how many times I asked, <laughs> I, I I wasn't given a, <laughs> yeah. a very clear answer as to exactly how that works. Yeah, I don't think that would go very well in my place. You know, it's ten to four. Ben, can we can we uh, can you guys jump on the chat a little bit? I think it's time to give our our crew some love and maybe pull pull some stuff out of here and let's start talking to them a little. Yeah, bit. I've got more. But just I, I want to ask you a question quickly before we. I go and have a, a scan through those. Yeah. So, do you think that um, that Zeiss are going to start doing AF lenses for full frame? Um. Well, they already are with the bodice lenses. That's sorry. E well, for, for for EF and for and for Nikon. No idea. Do too big. No idea. I mean, I, my guess would be no because you know they identified uh, a hole in the market with what they did with bodice and they also chose smartly some focal lengths which don't always cross over so you'll notice that there's no 50 millimeter bodice lens there is a 40 millimeter and then they jump to an 85 because sony has like 25 including the zeiss versions uh mm. you know 50 to 55 millimeter lenses that exist there so um, I don't know. I think that when you get into certain lens mounts, there's so much competition there. And I don't know if it makes sense for a company like Z Zeiss to go down that route. But I do think the bodice uh, choice mm. was, was a smart one. So I don't, yeah, not, not okay. sure. Yeah. Interesting. So I've got interesting, well, one question that is asking what we are, all, what lenses we are all filming ourselves with right now, which mm. 
I think we've mentioned, but just to go again, I'm on the 17 to 55 Canon, the FS lens, 2.8. Mm -hmm. What are you on, Jim? I'm actually on the Fujifilm uh, 35 millimeter f2. So I'm on the on a prime lens right now that I've been using for most of my episodes because I can go wide open, but it's wide enough for what I'm doing. But then I can't get the sexy cam that uh, that Caleb has. Um, yeah. Shallow to Caleb? the field is amazing, though, right now. Mm, thank you. Mm. Um, yeah, 28 and 75, a7 III. Cool. Uh, oh, uh, somebody said something about Alexa Mini. Let me just tell you, with all this full-frame stuff that's going on, I hope to goodness that one day I have enough money, meaning it's not too much money, to just pick up an Alexa Mini because that camera is amazing. And I don't care if it's two or three years from now. Um, I'll be happy with that. Hey, have you? Do you know how much of Avengers has been shot on... Alexa and Alexa Mini. Are, are we having any problems with what we're seeing on the screen there? I don't think so. Okay. Next. <laughs> Just saying. Mm. Okay. Have, have they started to fall in price now? The used, the used minis. Yeah, I don't think it's dramatic though. But I mean, you know, the resale I think that's value. More like a, I mean, at least for me, that's like a ten to ten ten year item when we're all like. Do you really need 16K when all the vloggers are doing videos on that? <laughs> well, thank like, you, Donald. Oh. Well, thank you, Donald. Uh, yeah. Um, so what yeah, do we got for good. some comments there? Uh, do you see anything interesting, uh, Caleb or Ben, that we can pull up here? Uh, suggestions um, for M42 glass to adapt to the X-T3 or X-T20 mm. from Dean. Uh, Carl Zeiss, Zeiss Jenna lenses, rather. Uh, the Russian stuff um one thing i do is like just google vintage lenses there's all, there's all these sites that have like every single lens ever made yeah and just click on the m42 mount and start opening tabs by the end yes. you'll have like 47 yep. tabs and just start looking through stuff check check uh what's the what's the uh, the photo website that's Flickr. Flickr for for images yeah. and pop on ebay no, but for real, everybody, um, because now I have the lenses that I need, so I can say it. Olympus Zuko manual lenses. Um, yes. It, they're Agreed. beautiful. I mean, they it's are. just, they, and, and you can adapt those lenses to anything. They're all, they're all full frame. Anything. Uh, they're anything. And they're all tiny and they're all beautiful. Adorable. They're, they're, they're adorable. They really are adorable. I love them. You can pick up. Uh, an Olympus Zuko Zoom, and and you can get them for like a hundred, hundred forty bucks on B and H's website, and uh, just just look up Olympus Zuko, the manual lenses, and uh, have some fun with those with an adapter. Yeah, I've got the, those F four lenses. Yeah, they're, they're cool. Fun. Yeah, great. Yeah, and there's something so nice about hunting for old glass. Yes, and especially the not well known stuff. Yeah, exactly. And although, because the, the problem is now that because of the, um, the small flange uh, sensor size that there's so m you can adapt them to so many cameras now and the prices of them on eBay and places like that have gone through the roof. But there are still places in charity shops in the UK, you can still find things that are still proper bargains. But the other thing, and I'm, I'm thinking that the three of us should organize a little field trip, mm. Russia flea market everywhere and they're just like a market stall that is just floor to ceiling mm. old russian lenses Amazing. for nothing money what in russia yes but that's yes. a lot of vodka that we'd be drinking while we do that would we be making sound decisions <laughs> i think the stuff's cheap enough for us not to really worry that much about it the vodka will cost more than the lenses maybe <laughs> probably well, maybe probably not. i yeah I don't know. I, I was reading an article recently about someone who'd just been, and they said it's still like that. It was like that when I was there in the 90s, but apparently it's yeah, still still there. See, love to see what you guys do with $50 at a flea market for lenses. Oh, you but, know how fun it would be to do that, like Top Gear style? What? That's exactly what we should do. Yeah. That's exactly what we should do. We should go to some obscure, obscure Russian city somewhere like Ekaterinburg or somewhere like not Moscow, somewhere yeah. smaller, somewhere kind of there in the Can middle we go to St. Petersburg? Because I want to go there. St. Petersburg's nice. Moscow's more interesting. Mm. 
St. Petersburg's prettier, but Moscow's mm. kind of, yeah. The three All of right, us, we, we might not get out of the country, though. So we'll <laughs> be exciting, though. <laughs> you want uh, a right. <laughs> random uh, side note for those who were talking about, you You were just talking about how it's like becoming more expensive with mirrorless. The one lens that I haven't seen much many people talk about, It's I think it's one of the most made lenses ever. Um, I'm trying to think of a car or a bike. What is that Honda bike that there's like billions of them in the world? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. Um, the C90. Yeah. Yeah. This is that of the lens world. It's the, I just put it in the chat, the Indistar 61. If you, if you search what I just put in eBay, uh, you can find them for like eight bucks for two. Seriously? Um, you can buy them by the box too. If you search that and then put in lot, L O T. Um, ah. you buy 10 of them for under 50 bucks. New business. It's amazing. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of them. And they come with different colors. And I think they um they were so inaccurate with their manufacturing that instead of trying to make them all exactly 50 millimeters, they're like, all right, we'll just call them a slightly different name. So there's like 50, 51, 52, 53 millimeter. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, wa I wonder I, I wonder I wonder if Caleb actually like he put that into the chat and in actual fact, whenever you look at it, it goes ships from Illinois. And he's got like three thousand of them inside of there, and this is this is his whole little business. There you go. <laughs> got to pay the mortgage somehow. Yep. A uh, ton of Bolex sixteen millimeter in Mexico City in the flea market. That would be fun. Go yeah. Out, memo. Yeah. Cool. I just found one hundred yeah. of them for under five hundred bucks. In your <laughs> in your garage? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Cassie, Ukraine, Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine. Um, oh, that's pretty close well. to here. There you go. Yeah, we could go have get Ben will pick him up. He'll get like a little, a little one of those little white little vans. It'll be, it'll say, oh, it'll gosh. say plumber, plumber on the outside or something. He'll need to get like, Slavic to come over and then he can translate for me. Oh, for goodness sake! What is that? What just? <laughs> that, is, that is the what? longest link <laughs> ever. I don't even life. know what that is. That's just the sent, most. I just sent the guys a link and it's like forty thousand characters. I just said that's you just sent me like that thing is in like Sanskrit. What is that uh, thing? Unbelievable. That's wow. amazing. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I hear the gentlemen. I hear the pitter patter of chill little children, right? Yeah. It it is definitely time for bed. Okay. So. <laughs> Good luck so. on your trip and all the best and safe travels, uh, Ben. Thank yeah, you both very of much. You have and... good shoots, and Ben, don't fall into the ocean, please. I'll we try very hard not to fall <laughs> fall into the ocean. He's been trained. Yeah. Got it. That's true. Yeah. That's great. Yep. So thank you very much again, all of you, for joining in on the chat and coming back every week. We really, really appreciate it. It's really good fun. Don't uh, don't forget that we're just this one time. Yeah. Again, because you and I next I week am. we are. Yeah. I'm I'm in New York. You're somewhere on some oil rig or whatever you're going to do. Yeah, middle of the North Sea next week. So and uh, and and Caleb needs a week to to get over us for a little while. So we're we're going to skip you could schedule it and I could just chat with people for an hour via you text. You could. It's true. <laughs> so we we are skipping uh can you just let everybody know Ben we're skipping next week Absolutely. and we'll come back. What's the date that we'll be back? Just uh mm, let's pull that up. Let me have a look. Okay. It, the next the, uh it 15th. will be the mm. 15th, yeah. The 15th. The okay. 15th. Where well, I probably will still be in uh Norway, but mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but back on land and with an internet connection, I presume. So great. we'll be back then. Yeah. Thank you very much again for joining us. And uh, we will see you in two weeks' time. Two weeks. Hey, gentlemen, all the best. Love gentlemen. you guys. Uh, thank you, everybody. Lovely, lovely everybody. Right, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you Cheers. so much. Yep. Cheers to everybody and all the best. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. There it is. Press record on your XT3. Press record on your XT3. And yep. we are out.